Welcome back boys and girls, thanks for tuning in. In this video we got confirmation about NEO and a change in leadership. The CFO has just resigned and that was topic of my last couple of videos in which I said that this is likely to happen and indeed today we got the news and so I want to give you a couple of thoughts around why I think this is the right move. I mean I, I said so in the last couple of videos but I will add on that and give you also my views on the, the person who will be uh, replacing him and kind of give you an outlook um, of the whole context of things. So first of all, here's the news release today. NEO announces management change. Um, Mr. Stephen Wei Fong has tendered his resignation as the chief financial officer of NEO for personal and family reasons, effective July 5th. In my last video I was saying like, you know, what could be a good time for this to happen? I thought maybe it might be around the earnings call, but seems maybe also because people like me have started to speaking publicly about this. Um, it was a rather short-term thing now to happen even before that and, you know, to clear everything up and say, look, here it is officially. Anyways, so you decided to do it today and it's now a fact from today. The board of directors of the company has approved the concurrent promote of the company's senior vice president of finance, Mr. Stanley Yu Chu, as the new finance chief financial officer. Since joining NEO in October 2020, uh, 2016, Mr. Chu has demonstrated strong expertise and leadership in overseeing the company's fi overall financial and reporting functions. Prior to joining NEO, Mr. Chu held various financial leadership roles at leading multi multinational companies. So I think here's where I want to uh, first start saying a couple of words about the previous CFO, which in my opinion didn't have an easy job, right? So he joined 2019 as the CFO right after the Hefei agreement uh, where there was a change in leadership after NEO almost uh, you know, went bank bankrupt. And so during that time, you know, strange things have happened. Like we had a pandemic, we had lots of um, fundamental changes at NEO. It was a turbulent time and I said in my videos like if I were in the shoes of Li Bin I would find a scapegoat and say look there's somebody who needs to be responsible for the missed estimations and so on and we had a CFO who publicly went onto TV and said you know guys we're gonna hit X, Y, Z numbers and obviously that wasn't the case. I know it's certainly not in his fault and position purely like it's always the team right he's certainly aligned with what other people have said in the background and whatever but sometimes it calls for a head and I think uh, it's the right signal to sell to the market because unfortunately the position in the end was without any trust by investors so you know during that time we saw the share price decline by a lot Lots of it due to macroeconomics and so on, but also partly due to some of the expectations set too high and then delivering too low, right? And so a couple of reasons for that. And ultimately, um, there was simply no trust in this position anymore. Like who would believe a new call from this CFO in the future? Nobody. They also lost big investors like Bally Gifford on the way. So, you know, time for change. And I'm glad that Neo is following through that. Uh, of course, they say here because of family reasons and so on, private things. You know, I think they are splitting in good terms. Um, the, for the CFO, certainly it wasn't great to announce uh, misses all of the time. And, uh, you know, he can't change a pandemic. Uh, you know, there's things he's certainly not in control of. But now they said we're in a transition phase and we're moving on to a new stage of Neo. And that's what happened. Now, who's the new person and why I think it's actually the right choice? So, by the way, Stanley Chu here um, is still having his old position here, senior vice president on LinkedIn. And um, yeah, I think he brings around the, the, the right credentials, in my opinion. He's a, he's a young person. He... Um, I've been following him for some time. Actually, I'm also connected to him. And um, he's got this multinational background. He's got um, a bachelor by Peking, uh, 
Beijing University, like the best university you can get uh, in, in China, Shanghai University of Finance and Economics in uh, as a master's. So to be honest, I think even on paper, he's already got better credentials than the former CFO. And um, that's, that's a great thing. I hear some people out there talking about how, you know, it's a, it's a problem that it's somebody who's following up who's been already with the company and it's not really new blood. But I personally don't think so. I think it's great that it's somebody who is um, loyal to the company. He's been there since 2016. Um, this person, a highly skilled person like this, has various opportunities to go somebody else, but he remained with Neo ever since. He's possibly very well connected within the company now. He's like, you know, one of the first persons by Neo uh, now still uh, running with the company after all of these difficult periods. He's basically been through almost two immediate bankruptcies, if you will. And so, yeah, that loyalty should be good. And it also possibly, underst uh, you know, kind of, not understands, um, um, reconfirms the relationship with Li Bin. I think Li Bin needs somebody who he can trust with. And if he would bring in a new person, yeah, that would be good for, you know, having this fresh blood sense and stuff. But, um, you know, along the way, you will have um, difficulties arise. And if you know a person already, like Stanley here, um, I think that's much better for uh, from a management position. That's just my personal reading. And we also saw that Stanley recently has been par uh, part of some of the earnings calls already. And in my opinion, he was impressive with his answers and uh, being much more fluent than the previous CFO in English. You may have noticed that um, Li Bin, he's currently talking sometimes in English on the earnings calls with now Stanley, who's seemingly be uh, very fluent in English as well. So there is some sort of a, a new Neo emerging here. They are trying to, um, you know, improve their communications with investors. That's the personal sense that I'm getting now, especially that lots of retail investors are, you know, very loyal and keeping with the stock and the company and are managing to reading through all of the noise and so on. And I think, you know, at least that's how I'm personally reading that. The fact that they are now responding with a change in SCFO position and also Stanley and Lee Bin starting to speak English in the course and so on. Um, these are signs that they want to bring about change and that, that they want to follow up and become better at managing investor relations. That's that's just how I'm um, you know, reading that. And so having an established person who knows the company inside out as a pocket who has got the relationship with Lee Bin and so on, I think that's a positive. It's also been approved by the board here explicitly. So yes, we have now new investors with Abu Dhabi who possibly had a say in this change of personnel here and who must have approved it. And so I'm sure that he or they did their due diligence on Stanley. And for that fact, I think it's a positive that it's not somebody new that may bring on, you know, new consultants, new, um, you know, second row executives who help him um, become better at um, leading the company now towards profitability. Because I think that's essentially what it is. Now we're now transitioning to a new phase. And I think it's smartly done. That's also something that I want to give out here as an outlook here. Um, I think uh, for once Neo timed it very well and um, demonstrated a, a good shift in a managerial position here. Um, because they're now giving Stanley the Q2 as the first quarter as a CFO, which is likely the best quarter in a while. Uh, it's pretty much by the numbers that we know already. And if things hold true for the next quarter, Q2 earnings, they will be good. And it will start actually with the trajectory of decreasing net losses. And, you know, he comes in, he gets a positive quarter and... That kind of st starts already with some positive traction and establishes some, some new confidence. And with the confirmation of Li Bin and the board and so on, um, this might actually mark a turnaround for NEO as the company and their financials, uh, which hopefully Stanley finds a way to give better guidance and uh, you know manage the Wall Street estimations a little bit better. 
uh, because he definitely still faces lots of challenges of um, being able to manage this turnaround of getting the company profitable. But he might be the CFO who actually um, gets this company profitable or at least uh, is part of this um, timeline if everything works out well. So that's why I would also think we need to congratulate here to Libin who certainly is responsible for this move. Yes, of course, also the board of directors. Um, but, um, you know, given Li Bin's um, superpower, voting rights and everything, uh, and possibly how he's listening to, to us as retail investors and, um, you know, the feedback out there, uh, I certainly see it as a signal, as I said from the very beginning. And if that's true, then so far it's been well executed it's rather a smooth transition like you know chinese companies they can be very ad hoc and in chaos and we've we've got that many times in the past at neo but this seems to be a rather smooth transition so how will the market react i said before that i expect that the market will reward neo for this um i'm not saying that's gonna happen in one day i don't know where the stock might be closing today or whether or not it might be red or green today i wouldn't read too much into today's um, market reaction to be honest because um, we've seen NEO been kind of trading more on macros recently than on the fundamentals in terms of delivery turnaround and so on and you know sometimes it takes a little bit to digest for these investors uh, for these banks for example earnings reports usually take at least three days for people to digest in the meanwhile it's been just traders and so on but um, I mean, on a fundamental basis, this should be a chance to re-establish trust and to start a new phase for NEO there. And so I do think that over time, this should be the right step and well executed for now. And if they keep on going like this, um, then there is a good chance that um, institutional investors will find more interest about this company again and come back, maybe even Bally Gifford, who knows, but um, not going as far as that. But um, yeah, I, I'd personally love to see more of that. Uh, like I still think, you know, some of this consolidation in neo management positions is a positive, like we've seen in Europe with, uh, you know, making it more of a European team than the special markets and so on. Um, and we'll see what else will be um, on, on the agenda. Uh, this one today is a big one. And I think it's a big one for investors. So let me know in the comments what you think about it. That was my 10 cents. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video.